Now, it remains debatable as to when or where the first jump scare was used in a film, and even more debatable as to the effectiveness of jump scares in movies as a whole, but things are drastically different when we jump over to video games. First and foremost, it's easy to spot what exactly the first jump scare was in gaming, as many have already documented its existence. The first ever jump scare in a video game came from 1985's Rescue on Fractulous, made by Lucasfilm Games. It was available for the Atari 5200, Commodore 64, Apple II, and ZX Spectrum Color Computer 3. Oh god, this was, this was back when there was a lot less uniformity in computers and video game consoles as a whole. But check it out, this game had some incredible graphics back in the time. I mean, 1985, it's really mind-blowing. Keep in mind that this is way before Doom or Star Fox or anything closely resembling 3D. So this game really blew some minds back in the 80s. Enough gushing though, let's talk about the jump scare in question. See, the objective of this game is to save these crash-landed pilots from this alien planet infested with jaggies, an alien race that's ready to exterminate you and your friends. Searching around for the missing pilots can be difficult with the jaggies constantly shooting at you, but once you find them, they end up running towards you and enter your ship. Though sometimes you might get it wrong, and you won't know until it's too late. Oh fuck, well look at that ugly freak, and he's got a real impressive animation there. It, this might not be the scariest jump scare or the loudest, but again, it's 1985, the first ever horror game hasn't even been released by this point. It has scared a few people in the past, but honestly, it doesn't matter if it has or hasn't. What matters is that this is often credited as the first ever jump scare, and from my research I haven't really found anything sooner. I mean, I have heard some people call the Yeti from Ski Free a jump scare, and I've had some interesting claims that Sinistar was one of the first jump scares with this horrible digitized scream. I hunger, coward. <laughs> but I feel like that's a bit of a stretch. I think if we really want to get into jump scares in horror games, like games that actually utilized in order to freak out their audience sort of jump scares, then I'd personally recommend Sweet Home on the NES. It's a game based off the Japanese horror film of the same name, and it's widely considered the very first horror game ever made, which influenced Resident Evil later on. More importantly, however, the encounters this game has are all pretty terrifying and often make you think fast before you face the consequences. I don't see too many people talk about this game enough, but really it is a fantastic game and I feel it deserves its own recognition for the horror genre as a whole. But of course, just because it might be the first doesn't mean it's the most popular, which is why we gotta mention Resident Evil, which many people claim is the true horror experience that brought all sorts of crazy techniques that made you scared shitless. The awkward controls, that's scary, the terrible camera angles, also pretty spooky, that one corridor with the dogs, Fuck that. Everything about this game was built to make you experience terrifying difficulty and anxiousness. These jump scare moments helped amplify just how alone you are and how vulnerable you are. You're never too sure when you'll be safe as every room could be a death trap. Horror games, however, are very different from horror movies as controlling your character and being immersed in this world is far more effective already on its own than having a movie build this all up from the ground. Horror movies have to really teach you to be scared, but horror games, you're already scared. Not to knock horror films, of course, it's just that there's a reason why jump scares are far more effective when used less in movies as opposed to in games where that's almost celebrated. We play horror games 
games for the experience, sometimes for the story, or for maybe sometimes how fun they can be. It's why Five Nights at Freddy's can be so terrifying while mainly using jump scares as their main hook. You can't really get away with that in films, where it's almost a weakness. Though used correctly, it can be very, very powerful. But then of course, we have the outlier. The thing that lives between entertainment and cheap scares. I'm talking, of course, about screamers. Internet screamers are far different from jump scares, as jump scares are used to emphasize the terror within a movie or game. Screamers are literally meant to be just cheap, and, and many times it's meant to just trick you. I briefly spoke about the maze game last year, developed by Jeremy Winterrod. The maze game paved the way for spooky jump scare videos everywhere, ever since its genesis in 2004. Hell, it was so popular and so old that you could even see some early prank videos show up on America's Funniest Home Videos. Boy, you gotta have some saggy ass skin if you remember AFE. Anyways, this took the internet by storm, and before you knew it, everyone is making a screamer. I even covered how Nickelodeon had their very own screamer flash game back in the early to mid 2000s. It was easy to make and fun to watch other people fall for it. Of course, talking about screamers is nowhere near relevant to the impact jump scares had. Screamers are their own thing after all, but without jump scares in films, we wouldn't have them. Nowadays, people discuss whether or not jump scares are effective, with near unanimous belief that jump scares are lazy and aren't necessarily what make a game scary or good. I think when it comes to video games, you see this talked about a little less. I mean, I've played a lot of modern horror games where there were dozens and dozens of jump scares, but I still think the game is very good. But then again, you have games like Five Nights at Freddy's who pretty much uses jump scares as a gimmick, and while very effective in the very first game, as I mentioned, it got incredibly complicated and far too predictable in the next few games. It was practically a meme about how overly exaggerated these people were with their reactions of Five Nights at Freddy's jump scares. I mean, honestly, it's the same game and the same kind of scares over and over again. How could you not learn from before and not be scared? This actually was the catalyst to PewDiePie's changes in current content because of how bored he was with the series and how he hated pretending to be scared all the time. So yeah, use it one too many times and you kind of get jaded of it all. I still believe one or two jump scares in a horror film is perfect. One jump scare is enough for me to be scared, but two jump scares is enough for me to be paranoid. But after that, you're just pushing your luck. In the end, it's the utility of jump scares that people need to learn how to master, not how it can be done. It's something that can take careful planning, perfect shots, and the right atmosphere. Build it up enough and it can really scare the shit out of people. But you know, it's funny, after nearly 70 years, that cat people jump scare? seems just as effective now as it was back then. Maybe even more so. It all just takes some careful planning.